I'm a big believer of you have to have everything, everything sorted out all logistically before you uh-huh. win a fight or you win these types of events before the day it starts. Uh. You got to make sure that everything is coordinated. Your staff are comfortable. They understand what they're going to be doing as well as we take in those reservations. We work with a lot of the people who want to get these booths so they can have the best experience possible. All right, we're good. Good to go. Welcome back to Two Fries Podcast, where we document the rise, start in Winnipeg's town and personalities, aka the number one podcast in Winnipeg. Yes. Different setup. We're Completely different sound. setup. <laughs> we're at Summer of Sound. Huge thanks to Stephen Hua, Summer of Sound, everyone, for letting us be here. Yeah. We've got a special guest for us. Let's bring him on. He, um, he's the bottle service manager at Summer of Sound. Please welcome Kevin. Hello, everyone. <laughs> it's nice to be here. Nice, yes. nice to talk It's a very cool idea being able to get all that input from the different goers to the festival as well as the staff and managers right mm-hmm. brings a lot of cool perspectives so it's a fantastic idea and it's good that we got you before right nobody's here <laughs> yeah well, once, this, once this concert starts <laughs> i'm not gonna be available at all until maybe one in the morning what's so your game plan do you have a game plan going into this what's oh, your game plan i'm a big believer of you have to have everything everything sorted out all logistically before mm-hmm. you uh-huh. win a fight or you win these types of events before the day it starts uh. you got to make sure that everything is coordinated your staff are comfortable they understand what they're going to be doing as well as we take in those reservations we work with a lot of the people who want to get these booths so they can have the best experience possible so what's the what's the chaos looking like before the event you know what like steven says the best part of hosting these events is actually going to them rather than planning them because it's super chaotic so what's that behind the scenes look so we're lucky because the Cinnaboyan Downs is really a fantastic venue. Yeah. They offer a lot of help when it comes to the initial setup, mm-hmm. the equipment, the mixes. Yeah. So they've really done a lot of work for us, which I'm incredibly impressed. Yeah. During our first couple of years, because this will be my fourth summer of sound that I've been working, yeah. I've managed three of them, and I worked as a backstaff for my very first one. Yeah. So you got to learn a lot of a lot of hiccups and bumps right. in the road that happen. So it's nice to see it gets smoothed yeah. over. Mm-hmm. In a day like today, a lot of the heavy lifting was done yesterday with our yeah. volunteers. Yep. So now it's more adding that extra touch going into right. it. I like it. Well, we're all about Tool for Rise, the rise of an individual, the journey that they take. Take us back. How did you get into this bottle service area? How did you get into <laughs> managing? How did you get into all this? You, that's a long story, I got to okay. say. <laughs> as, as much time as you'd like. No, <laughs> not a problem. So I actually started working for 4 for 1 originally. So I had started working for 4 for 1 when I was about 19. I did busing for a couple months. I went to bar back, mm-hmm. and then I stayed bar back within 4 for 1 for about five years of its progress. Nice. Within that, I got, a, I got to know a lot of really cool people. A lot of people are doing amazing things throughout the city. Mm-hmm. So that was a, a big inspiration, and they gave me good opportunities. And I made sure to put in my effort and the organization and the groundwork that has to be done for these things. Right. And it really took off. Leading into that... With my normal job, because it's almost like the, the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde yeah. type comparison. So I actually do landscape horticulture. Oh. I have a education or a red seal within landscape That's horticulture. Awesome. So yeah. mostly plants and things like that. That's good. That's so it's a, two different areas. Of, two well, different uh, areas. It's the man and the machine type deal. What do you like better? Ah, it's tough. Uh. <laughs> with, with the events like this, when it's happening, the energy is unrivaled. Yeah. But at the same time, like... With my roots with horticulture, providing these types of trees and actively like helping the environment is fantastic. And it gives a lot of like uh, assurance for the future, being able to participate in those types of things. Mm-hmm. Do you think like your experience from your landscaping transfer over to Summer of Sound at all? Like just management side of it or either like, you know, like customer service or all that? Cutting the grass. Oh, I think a good amount when it comes just to how precise you have to be with planning. Yeah. When you're doing those blueprints and you're, you're planning out what types of plants work best in different situations, right. that's kind of applicable even to the bottle service section where I have to find servers that can work really well with my back staff as well, kind of have that relationship already with our booths. So it increases the experience and it makes it feel a lot more at home for a lot of, a lot of booths that have been here since I started managing. What's, what's the team looking like? Right. How many how many people are going to be bustling and busy today? Like, <laughs> so on the team setting right now, uh-huh. I've got nine back staff and I've got 12 servers. Jeez. We have two separate areas this year, and this will be the first year that we've had these cabana sections on the left hand side of the stage. Uh-huh. The cabana sections will have a dedicated server for each cabana, as well as we'll have four bar backs helping the general operation of that area. Okay. And on my side where I'm going to be, 
I have the rest of the server, so I have another six servers there, and then I have five back staff to help me with all of our tables. Wow. On the right-hand side where the track is, we have about, it'll range between 26 to 31 tables, and I expect the majority of those to be packed and filled by, <laughs> by eight or nine o'clock. Yeah. So is that, are you planning for the peak hours to be after three-ish or like closer to like the later, like uh, um, the main sets, or are you planning on like even like the third or fourth stage kind of vibe? Yeah, that's a tricky thing with the preparation yeah. is you never really know when some of these booths are going to come. <laughs> yep. And your biggest, most chaotic booths, they always come at the most inopportune <laughs> time. Yeah. But ideally, I'd say that that 5 to 6.30 window mm -hmm. is when we're going to see the most, the most of the VIPs and booths are yeah. su start shuffling in. There's going to be a, quite a bit of people. We see some of the people rolling up as well. Um, are you, are you, is there anything that you're worried about, right? Yeah. Like you're going into this event and you try to do as much planning as you can before, but something inevitably yeah, may yeah. go wrong. So what's it, how do you mentally prepare for that? So I think flexibility and putting flexibility in your schedule and being able to take, to roll with those punches because they're going to come. Yeah. You're never going to have that festival where everything is perfect. Yeah. But once those problems do come out of the woodwork, you got to be able to identify it, execute it, and make a proper position for it. Hundred percent. We always leave to leave to. Uh, sorry, we always like to leave our audience with some sort of advice. So, any advice you can give to the listeners out there that want to start something entrepreneur-wise, or even like some around, they want to get join the team, or even bartending or something like that. Any advice you can give to them? I think when it comes to the club industry within Winnipeg, a big thing is you got to be a go-getter. I know that tends to be said a lot, so it tends to water down the actual, like, how valuable the advice could be. Yeah. But a lot of these venues, a lot of these clubs, they want people who can come in and can say, I can do it better. Yeah. And that attitude and being able to take on that confidence will bring you a long way within the industry, within any industry, quite frankly. If it's landscaping or horticulture or if it's <laughs> serving bottles or being a bartender. Yeah. What, what's some of your long-term goals? Like, what, what is something that you really want to leave on the stamp of Winnipeg or wherever it may be, wherever it may take you? So what I'm currently doing, I work for the Manitoba Métis Federation, and we have a tree initiative mm -hmm. where we provide trees to Métis citizens. Yeah. So I think, for me, that is a lasting a very lasting impact on the province. Wow. I'm a big fan of Manitoba, and I love Manitoba. So I want to leave this province better than when I came to it, and eventually when I leave, the trees that I plant will grow for hundreds of years. Wow, <laughs> wow. You know, first episode of the day, and you're all in. <laughs> you're I'm, I'm already, in, you're already I'm into it. Going. He's already into it. He's ready to go. <laughs> it's only 10 minutes in. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, like, so planting the trees, like, that's crazy, right? Because... I feel like you got to have a lot of patience with that as well. Like, you know, you plant it and it doesn't, you don't see the fruit until yeah. like, you know, like a hundred years ago. So did you ever have a moment where you were like, oh, I can't do this anymore? No, not necessarily. A big thing that keeps me going with something where you don't see the results in a short period of time is the saying that you plant trees, not for you to enjoy the shade, but for the future generations to enjoy Ooh, that shade. Hands dropping. And that hard. is, that <laughs> is the epitome of what landscape horticulture can be. Yes, sir. Wow, Kevin. You're right. <laughs> I think we got to have him on for a longer episode than this. Sometime yeah. soon. Yes, Absolutely. yes. I know you're a busy guy, so we'll get you going out of here. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure to check out Kevin. We'll take everything in the description below. And, uh, yo, check out the, hopefully in the future, a longer episode. We got to get you out. We got to get you out no, for I'll sure. Be down. 100%. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kevin, for Not coming. No problem. Thanks yes, again. Thank you so and much. And if you're around again, <laughs> swing by. Swing man. by. Of course. <laughs> we'll get awesome. you. Have a good summer sound, everybody. Thank awesome. you, everyone. Woo. Peace. <laughs>